Okay, so this is time for the discussion. There. <clears throat> so one question comes from Yvonne saying, are there any discourses on a selflessness or emptiness of self or different kinds of a self? A self? That is one of the very um, profound teachings of the Buddha. That is uh, the, on the, the topic of the discourses. Buddha gave very first, uh, very first uh, five disciples, the second discourse. It's called Anatta Lakana Sutta. That basically means Anatta means a non-self. Lakana means a characteristics. So this course on the characteristics of anatta or the non-self or no self. And normally in relation to the self, it's a really difficult subject because we all are attached to our self. And this was, this is not just us, and it was during the time of the Buddha. And um, also now, and it will be in the future. It's a very common question. And that's a very difficult uh, question to com comprehend, as we're all attached to our own self. We attach to our names, attached to our nationality, attached to our ethnicity, religion, and so on. And not only the attachment of these outer entity or the identities that is given to us and we hold on to it and we project ourselves as a, this is me, but um, we also attach our own self. <coughs> so. <clears throat> and our self, according to Buddhist uh, our perception, perspectives, is divided into two parts, that is um, mind and a body. And this mind and a body again are divided into um, five different aspects of it. It's called the aggregates, it's pancha khanda. And on this uh, pancha skanda or pancha khanda or five aggregates, that's a combination of uh, five things. One is rupa as a matter or the body, the material things that that is made of uh, uh, four elements. So this material object does not feel and does not um, have any emotional uh, activities. But there are other four aggregates or the factors. The one is called the Vedana or the feelings. The second is called the Sanya or a perception. And the third is the will or the karma formation. So forming intentionally is called a Sankhara. And the last one is a consciousness or the Vijnana. So combination of these of four um, factors is known as the mind. And what happens uh, that um, untrained mind tends to, or untrained person tends to attach to this uh, five aggregates, the rupa, the matter, the vedana, the feelings and the sanya, the perception, and they are intentionally doing things and the consciousness or the, the knowing.
and that creates the identity and now it was the time of the buddha that uh, persist this thought and people were trying to purify this so-called self in various ways in various terms and as a result of that famous practices were there at that time the first practice is called the uh, Kama Sukhalikana Yoga known as the self the essential pleasure so following the path to fulfill the sensual pleasures so that we can purify ourselves a purification of ourselves by consuming as many as or as much as the mind desires or wishes so this view is a materialistic view and fulfilling our desire non-stop and in every ways fulfilling it and the second practice that people were practicing in those days called Atta Kilamitana Yoga or the self-mortification the torturing oneself by doing various yogas not even eating or standing on one's one uh, one feet one foot or hanging on the trees and so on simply torturing this uh, uh, physical body thinking uh, that purifies the mind and that's how one will be able to purify their self so-called atta And the Buddha also practiced these two ways and found that it doesn't lead to the complete realization so that he chose the path called the middle path Amajjima Patipada and practicing that he was able to understand a true self ability to distinguish vividly each factors of the perception of a, a self that this is me or a mine and eventually realize that there is no self and there is also one uh, discourse that comes apart from the Anattalakana Sutta so the Anattalakana Sutta is a, the discourse on the characteristics of a non-self. Uh, Buddha gave this for the first time to the five ascetics as the second discourse of the Buddha in his dispensation. He simply uh, speaks about that if this matter is a self, we should be able to control over it we should be able to make it stop but it's a matter that this body itself is involuntarily working by itself we have no control over it it will grow and eventually it will die it's like a tree as long as conditions are conducive for it to survive it will survive and grow but the condition dissolves it also dissolves but we have no control over it we want to be young and uh, beautiful at all the time so we are not similarly we will be attached to feelings and you know, perceptions and the karma formation and our even knowing or the vijnana the consciousness which is again it's not a permanent entity we have no control over it as long as these are can has got the conditions and it will survive uh, and sustain and continue 
but eventually as the condition dissolves then it will go now there is uh, another uh, discourse called the Bhadeka Ratta Sutta and Bhadeka Ratta Sutta is uh, the, another beautiful story um, that uh, Buddha talked about uh, saying Atitang nanva makaya napati kanke anakata. Or basically, it uh, means one should not be uh, longing of the past and should not be worrying about the future, but living in the present moment. And uh, a person who is thinking of the past and the future will not be able to divert the uh, death because death will certainly be there and who knows it could be tomorrow so be heedless and practice and live in the present moment and here the question comes how one lives in the past and how one lives in the future and how one lives in the present moment and the Buddha discussed further on that topic and saying that people will be thinking that my form or this matter was like that. So here basically talking about our young age that we used to be and we love to be and we want ourselves to be in that situation. So young and healthy and energetic and strong. A similar way I was like that and I will be in that way. So this kind of a, a thought are there yeah. and even thinking of that will be delighting and carried away with that form and then the feelings whatever feelings such as we have a good feelings in the um feelings of uh, uh, nice moments will be thinking that in the past I had such feelings and I want it to be back again or as we have uh, further on I used to think about this one or I had a uh, this form of a perception and this perception again if we look at closely our perception is changing every single day every single moment of our experience each time when we have a new day we come across with the things and our perception to that particular things will change so that's why we should not be uh, uh, hanging on to the past and uh, holding on to the same perception that we had. Similarly, with the thought uh, fabrication and a consciousness. And in the same way, people also expect uh, they're placing their expectations in the future and they carried away uh, with the delight of it in the future thinking that i might have such a form and so again here form or a matter of this body thinking that my body should be in this way or a that way in the future let's say by eating some form of uh, uh, um, supplement supplements that you can get uh, in a, a high-end markets and there will be a great 
um, advertisement about it that if you take it, your body will be uh, nice and, uh, and looking young and so on. So like that, similar to the feelings of perception, the thought fabrication and consciousness. So untrained mind will be thinking of this in a different forms with a delusional state or illusional thought, not knowing what should be known. And whereas in a present moment as well, where in a present moment, um, there are cases where an uh, uninstructed people, an instructed person, and a run off the mill person, kind of a, rum and a rumbling and going around again and again in the same stories, who has not seen and who hasn't come across with the right teachings and the wise ones and is not a uh, verse or in, uh, is not uh, qualified or haven't learned the teachings of a wise ones and is not trained to see this form as uh, selfless but he will or she will observe this form as a self or a self as a possessing form or a form is self, or self as in form. So there are four different ways of thinking of this form or this matter as a self. So form as a self, or a self as a possessing form, a form is in self, or self as in forms. And similarly, they also use feeling as self, self as a possessing feeling. A feeling is in self, self as in feeling. Similarly, the perception. Thought processes and a consciousness as self and the self-possessing consciousness, uh, self-possessing or a self as a possessing, so on. But whereas a trained person, one who has seen the teachings properly and been practicing on it, will see that <clears throat> That person does not see form as self or self as a possessing form, a form as in self or self as in form. So which is similar to the feelings. Well, I would not think it as a, uh, a self or a possess self as a possessing, possessing feeling or a feeling as in self, or a self as in feeling. So does the perception, uh, karma formation, or uh, thought processes, and consciousness. So that's how a person will live in the present moment by understanding that entire, these five aggregates are not a self. So this is how one would understand that selflessness. And this is what uh, needs to be understood. And further on, as long as we are attached to this form, we would not be able to comprehend the teachings properly. That's how we are wandering in the worldly matter, worldly affairs. But the moment when we able to overcome of this attachment of our own self, 
then we have attained the first ladder to the noble hood called the Sakaya Ditti. So in a short form, uh, the Buddha talks saying uh, that, uh, uh, talks about the selflessness by saying Panchupadana Khanda as a suffering. So attachment to the self, uh, these five aggregates leads to the suffering. In the same way, the moment when a person would able to overcome by not attach, not having an attachment to these five aggregates attains the false first noblehood called the Sota Panna, the stream enterer, by eradicating or overcoming the attachment of a self or identity of a own self as a permanent, so called the Sakaya Ditti personality view. So that's why the entire teachings of the Buddha is to understand this self and understanding that this self is not uh, exist in ultimate sense. And once the moment when we understood properly the existence of this self as a condition arose. In that moment, we are, in a way, becoming a real Buddhist. So that we are leading towards to be the Buddha, called a Savaka Buddha, one who is in line to realize the teachings of the Buddha and becoming one of them. So that's why the teachings of a selflessness is the key factor of the teachings of the Buddha. And all the problems that we have in the present moment, if we look at carefully, it is simply because of the existence of a self and a holding onto that self and identity of it causes the troubles and the conflicts and crisis and so on. And because of holding on to the self, we generate our greed, we generate hatred, and we do not know what should be known. And with that, there is a cruelty starts, harmless begins, there will be no compassion, there will be no kindness, there is no caring and sharing there is no generosity. There will be more corruption, self-centered, egocentric, and only doing things for personal good. So much of the time, greed-driven activities will be carried so that's why the moment when we drop our self, the existence of a self and understanding the nature of our self as similar to the grass, and then there will be no trouble. So Buddha used the simile of a grass and a trees. There are so many varieties of a grass, but they always classified as a grass and they will not be fighting over another that I am a better grass than you are. Similar to the trees, there is no trouble with the trees that I am bigger, I am stronger, I am longer than yours. There will be no fighting as only categorize of the categories of a tree or the grass. But we as a, a human beings are very clever and cunning, clever, clever, classifying ourselves or identifying ourselves as a white or a black or a Asian or a European or a this religion or a that religion. 
you know, uh, I am this much qualified and you are not. I have this much money, uh, this much prosperity, and you are not, and so on. With that, a society becomes um, dysfunctioned and brings more trouble. And that's simply on the basis of the concept of the existence of a self and a greed driven. And because of the greed driven, if you do not get what you wish for, then that again generates the hatred and the ill will and the jealousy and even to harm or even to you know, are ready to kill. And so there are so many violent in the activities going on, even the wiping out the entire ethnicity going on. And that's simply based on this existence of a self. So Buddha's teachings is basically overcoming that self and seeing the entire human beings and not only human beings, but the entire existence as a part of a ecosystem. So we become not the part of the ecosystem, but a part of an ecosystem, treating everybody equally. And I meanwhile, Buddha further saying that entire cosmos, all the beings, once upon the time we had been probably a mother or a brother or a wife or a husband or a close relatives because we have been born on this cycle of uh, existence the samsara so many times it's uncountable that it's very difficult to predict that the entire cosmos all the beings that exist once upon a time, they had been a close relatives. Who knows? Could be a wife or a husband or a brother or sisters or a mother and a father. So once a person look at in this way, one will drop the existence of a self away, but Bring, uh, developing this consciousness of a relativeness, consciousness of a connectedness and consciousness of being belong to. And with that, become a conscious of existence of a oneself and then to others and, one, and then others. So that's why whatever action one performs, that action will be not only for the benefit of an individual, but also will consider the benefit of a, a person who is close to us and the, and the members of the community. And that benefit is regarded as the proper benefit. So that's why Buddhism always encourages everyone to learn to be kind learn to be compassionate and learn to be a respect to one another being truthful and being alert awake in day-to-day -day life so the entire teachings of the buddha that's why is being alert awake and living in the present moment and that is the Buddha nature. So entire life that we are here is basically changing our perception by learning to know, learning to see things as they truly are. And eventually, once the perception become cleared, we fully understood, then we will attain the enlightenment the Buddhahood. So this is the teachings of the Buddha. Uh, so, and also the different kinds of a self. Um, so even the second question, different kinds of a self, although there is a, a 
non-self, but we still have this existence self. Uh, this is again the concept of the uh, a language that we have to use in a conventional level to understand uh, that uh, this is exist, yeah, but eventually it doesn't. There is a simile given in the one of the commentaries, so-called the Melinda Panha or the question of a King Melinda. And the story is that um, uh, King Melinda was uh, a king from uh, Yonok, or a Western king, uh, was conquering the India after the Alexander King Melinda was in charge of uh, and that part of the world and he was uh, quite a knowledgeable person and he was debating with the uh, different faiths, faith and uh, knowledge. So he was basically the hunter of uh, knowledge and it came, he came uh, to contact with one of the monks called the Nagasena and this conversation between the King Melinda and the Nagasena on that book. The first chapter begins with this, uh, the concept of a self. The story is quite interesting. As, uh, when uh, Nagasena was invited for the debate in the palace, Nagasena refused, saying, refused to have a debate in the palace saying that in the palace king is the king so he has full order whether king wins or whether king loses he has a power to summon the order so uh, Nagasena invited king to the temple for the debate and um, as the um, a king came to visit the Nagasena at that time, uh, straight away, a Nagasena asked, sorry, a King Melinda asked to the Nagasena that where is the Nagasena? Yeah. And then a Nagasena said, a Nagasena is a, is a, a person that given by a name that is given to this person. So where is Nagasena? Is it the hand? Is it the head? It is the limbs of the, you know, go on with the different limbs of the body as it is here, Nagasena. And the Nagasena said, no, no, no. And then eventually Nagasena was asked, then where is a Nagasena? And in, in your reply, Nagasena used the simile of a chariot, chariot, saying, where is, well, uh, your majesty, your majesty, how did you come? Uh, and the majesty, the uh, King Melinda said to the Nagasena that uh, I came on a chariot. And then Nagasena asked, where is the chariot? Is it a wheel? Is it a horse? And it goes on with the different parts of the chariot. And a king had to reply that a chariot is not a part of this whole chariot. But the entire, each function, each parts, when it comes together, it is known as a chariot. So the Nagasena said, so it is, your majesty, a Nagasena is a combination of in all these limbs and parts. Once all these comes together, then that becomes a Nagasena. So this is how it defined by a self. So in a conventional level, a self exists. But in ultimate sense, once you have fully understood, then that how, that's how one becomes selfless. So, in a way, it's like um, you are looking at the signpost towards the destination. 
So there is existence of a signpost and as well as the destination. The signpost is not the destination. But we have to rely on a signpost to, to go to the destination. So this is how one can understand the self and non-self. So this is the selflessness and uh, different kinds of a self. And in terms of the emptiness, again, there are also uh, a one big chapter on emptiness in the uh, fourth Nikaya, called a Sanyukta Nikaya. And there are also a few discourses on the Majjhima Nikaya as well on emptiness, that how one how uh, things are empty and this is another different uh, very difficult subject as well similar to anatta yeah? and in the mahayana tradition like in uh, uh, tibetan buddhism and uh, in a chinese buddhism emptiness become a, a main focus point so that um you know, the five aggregate is emptiness, but emptiness also the five aggregate. And the concept of uh, emptiness is like when there is nothing, there is something. When there is something, then there is nothing uh, like that. Yeah? So uh, the selflessness is not uh, emptiness, but the emptiness is a place where there is no selflessness, you know, something like that. So it's another a philosophy and particularly Madhyamika philosophy of uh, Tibetan Buddhism or Mahayana tradition is based on this concept of emptiness. So I hope that I have explained uh, all these three matters that Yvonne asked. That's quite a heavy subject today. <laughs> Uh, so if anybody has got any other uh, questions to ask, you're most welcome. But it's already 46 now, another 15 minutes. I just had a, 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 a booster vaccine today. Uh, so... I don't know uh, what uh, the effects will be. Uh, as I know uh, for now, I, I have this uh, the heavy arm, the left arm at the moment. Uh, but hope uh, nothing too serious. I'm feeling really hot. Um, like uh, this evening, I was just uh, contemplating and uh, focusing on this uh, vaccine and meditating on that. And uh, I was like observing uh, the effects and I could see some form of a difference in my body temperature and uh, also uh, unusual uh, a vibration in my heart as well. Um, but the rest is so far so good. So this is how it works. Okay, so uh, thank you, Yvonne. In this case, let's uh, practice. Um, hope, uh, thank you, Margaret. I hope there will be no side effects. Okay, so in that case, so thank you everyone for joining uh, with us, uh, practicing meditation on a Tuesday night. Uh, now, before ending, let's practice the loving kindness meditation to finish off. Okay? And let me see if there is any other. Okay, not nobody has got any questions. Okay, right. Okay, let's practice loving kindness meditation. Thank you, Tun Sandra. I will. Let's practice loving kindness meditation. Huh. 
Okay, so uh, bring your attention to the moment here and now. Relax yourself for a moment. Reflecting a few moments on the uh, today's um, uh, practice and uh, particularly today's discourse on a selflessness. And bring your attention to the body, awareness of your body, allowing yourself to relax and bring your attention to your heart, feel the beating heart. and allowing yourself to be happy by sharing loving kindness and compassion to yourself. Telling inwardly to yourself, may I be happy. May I be free from suffering. May I be free from hostility. May I be free from ill will. May I be free from anxiety. May I be able to maintain my well-being and happiness. Similarly, sharing loving kindness and compassion to all other sentient beings. Starting from near dear one, those who are around us, those who are around you, in the house, in the community, in the country, on earth, in the universe, visible and invisible beings, sharing loving kindness and compassion of whatever beings there are. May everyone abide in well-being. May everyone be free from hostility. May they be free from suffering. May they be free from ill will, animosity, May they be free from anxiety, stress, depressions. May they be able to maintain their well-being and happiness. 
may all beings be free from all kinds of calamities and suffering. And may they not be parted from the good fortune they have attained. May all beings be happy. May all beings be well. May all beings attain supreme happiness of Nibbana. So bring your attention to the body again. And to your eyes. And as you hear the gong slowly come out from meditation. Samma sambundo pakawa Kotang pakawan tang yabiva te Sawa kato pakawa ta tambo Tamang namasami Supati pano pakawa to sahavaka Sankang Namami Okay, so thank you everyone. Thank you Margaret, Toon, Sandra, Iwan and Peter Pon and everyone, Amkas, everyone. So Thank you and good night. Stay safe. Take care. And we'll see you tomorrow for the chanting. If you have any question that you want me to answer, you can drop uh, a message as well. I will cover other days. So thank you and good night. <laughs>